why do you feel that it's extremely important to to read and learn and why do you think those that do end up being typically more successful than those that don't so i have a saying as you'd imagine a cliche that smart skims the surface but genius goes deep mm. so in some of my uh things i do boot camps i always ask agents uh, about the number pi. Do they know the first three digits? For $5, do you know the first three digits of the number pi? And invariably, somebody will say 3.14. Yeah. But then I say for $100, give me the next three digits. Now, in a couple of instances, some people have known it. I don't give them enough time to Google. <laughs> but some people know it's 159. So smart would certainly be to know 3.14. But genius is the 159. You're not gonna learn the deeper things about your profession, about life, unless you're reading and consuming information in a way that takes you past your status quo, that takes you out of your comfort zone. So I'll be very specific and direct to the industry. For Medicare Advantage agents, if you know the doctors in the network, that's your three. If you know the meds are in the formulary, that's your one. If you can tell them the benefits, that's the four you'll make some sales that way. But if you know LIS and how to get them qualified, that's the one, you'll get more people enrolled. If you know how QMB, SLIMB, and QDWIF, BDE, and all of that works in the dual eligible space, now you'll be helping in the five. If you then know how to add indemnity to an MAPD to ensure against uh, the calamity of cancer or against hospitalization, now you're an agent that has gone better than SMART, 3.14, You've gone deeper, 159. And the only way you're going to get the things I just outlined is if you're willing to pick up manuals and read, not just go through AHIP and think it's a nuisance. Go through the carrier certification information and pick up those nuggets that will increase your income. Smart skins the surface, genius goes deep, real money, six figure renewal money is not on the surface. You got to go deep to get it. Wow. <laughs> I never heard anybody put it that way, but I love it. Yeah. Well, and the message that I hear most of the time is just grind, 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 work, 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 not, you know, and which is a, obviously work ethic is important, but you kind of put that on its head a little bit, you know, and that's interesting. You know? it, it's, a, it's a different approach from somebody that, that, that does go deep, you know. Uh, I probably can't name a sales related book that you probably haven't already read. And, and well, that it, at least it's on the shelf waiting to be read, possibly. <laughs> there you go. There you Have go. you ever heard of a book called Getting to Yes? Yes. I love that book. That's my favorite sales book. So it's really good, dude. It's actually on my bookshelf. Yeah, if we, if we had my, the, the setting I had on the last podcast behind me, I've got thousands of books. I, and look, and, and I want to say something, Landon, and it ties in again to what you guys do on your platform, Cody. This is why when I wrote this, I love, somebody said it's kind of counterintuitive, a little bit paradoxical that a, a Medicare Advantage guy 20 years at the time wrote a book and used final expense as the foundation. What I love, you mentioned about grind, grind, grind. A final expense agent is a grinder. They're a porch hopping, door knocking warrior. That's the way I characterize them. And that's affectionate and it's a compliment. And they're kinetic. That means they're moving. So when, I, when you can actually teach a kinetic, poor chopping, door knocking grinder, that there's a 3.14 and a 159. This is my third year in the organization I'm in now. I've got at least 100 agents that I could point you to that started out, didn't know what any of this was, that starting in January are receiving a six figure renewal. Mm. Well, um, I mean, yeah. No, I mean, give, give, give me a grinder that has knowledge and they'll be off the charts every single yeah. time. You, you, you got to have both. Yeah. It's, it's work ethic. You know, some people, you know, you hear that say, you know, that saying work smarter, not harder, but it's like both. Let's do well, both. And so most people would see your title of your book and probably think something different than what's actually in the book. Because you, you probably, when you see the title, you know, they've probably got to work more than six hours, but there's more to the equation, right? So it's like the four hour work week, you know? the dude didn't start out only working four hours, you know, so. Well, but, and, and I know I stop at each turn here, but that's really an appropriate point. Um, 
in, in thinking about the name and, and how I could get agents to engage, like Timothy Ferris's four hour work week and all the different four hour approaches he uses, it was actually, I was reading at the time, I read it typically annually, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill. For those that know, I think there's 17 or 21 concepts in the book, but the title is, a, is an eye catcher. It appeals to the emotional side of, I wanna think and grow rich. It, and so six hours to six figures brings you in, but then you realize in Think and Grow Rich, it's more philosophical. He's not talking about business. He's talking about mindset, like a way of Grant Cardone might that's been at your 8% nation. So, you know, yeah, you have to draw them in with a little bit of sizzle, but the steak may be a little different than they imagine once they get into it. Exactly. It's a super catchy title. Well, and I've often found that just from a marketing perspective that we are in a new era um, with salesmanship in general. I feel like the mantra that we try to live by is people work with the people that educate them. And if you're trying to educate them on the things they can Google and click on one of the top three results and read themselves, you're not that genius level. You're still on the 3.14. So I feel like the, the sales ability, because the realistic you know, reality of Medicare sales these days, from my perspective, I'm not licensed disclaimer, I'm not selling Medicare, I'm just giving my insight on working with Medicare agents, is that you know, I don't need, if you're selling Medicare, I don't need you to buy Medicare. I can go get Medicare from whoever else. You know what I mean? But if you're the one that educates me, on Medicare or that particular program or help me save money on a prescription drug plan or all these other acronyms that you threw out, you're gonna get my business and I'm gonna stay with you because you educated me on it, period. And you can't, education is not surface level. You gotta really dig deep, you know? And so I think that translates to not only sales, but marketing, but all things industry because the power of a salesman just, you know, being the person that was in front of the person at the time and, and having the leverage over the buyer is kind of over because I can just go to Google and figure out if you're full of crap in about five seconds. Yeah. You know, so I feel like that's a key component. You talk about the trends in the next 10 years, you've got to focus your marketing, your messaging, your sales ability on educating and how are you going to do that if you don't have good content? That's my thought. What do you think? I mean, does that make sense, Brandon? Well, fantastic. And yes, there's been an evolution. So, but I can hear a lot of new agents that don't know the three yet that are just finally expensive, they're not even health licensed. So we don't wanna, and, and not that you did this Landon, but we wanna characterize for them that there is a progression, a matriculation and that you can earn money all along the way and that you don't have to be some 24, 25 year expert to do what we just described. But I will say it this way, in the very beginning, if you're new, you are in the effort phase. Now effort means you've gotta do more than others that are skilled. But in the effort phase, you're likely in the beginning, especially Medicare, you're going to be a 3.14 order taker. Oh man, the docs are in, the meds are in, and here are your benefits, Ms. Jones, it's good. But sooner or later, through effort, you'll enter the skill phase. And then you've got to become a professional. Then you've got to become what you described, Landon, as an advisor. And then when you really get off the charts, you're going to be an advocate. And people that have advocates in their lives call me to say, I'm about to get cable. What, what subscription service should I join? I'm like, I have no idea. But the level of trust, because I'm an advocate for them is there. They, they don't want to make any decisions without your input. And I'm being a little facetious, but between advisor and advocate is where that six figure renewal income and longevity in this industry, that's where it's going to come from. And also I'm assuming a predominant amount of your referrals. I mean, your dad is like that too. Yeah. You know, that dude's business is built on referrals and he's built an amazing business and it's not because he's, um, you know, going through surface level, just running numbers. No, like Brandon said, it's, it's, uh, it's pure education. And most people in our industry too feel like, as Landon said earlier, that you, you, you give away just enough to make people want more. It's really not how everything works nowadays, you know, um, which is probably why we do so much content and, and why you're writing so many books, and everything else. People want, you know, they, they can find the answer whether you give it to them or not, you know, so why not give it all away? Well, you know, and, and you mentioned, you know, your dad, Brian, and he and I are likely in the same age range. Won't put Brian's business out. 39. Right? <laughs> <laughs> We're sort of the old schoolers that have learned and adopted the new school. So I think one of my colleagues, my buddy says, old school rules, new school tools. And we've evolved to where relationship is at the core of what we do. But that education, which is gained through knowledge, which is gained through reading, which is gained through the excellence of wanting to be great in the industry, 
So he has evolved rapidly and has now built an amazing uh, body of work in his own right. Uh, and now he's got you integrating all of these sort of uh, new wave, new age opportunity tools. The combination of those is a, is a Molotov cocktail that no one can beat. Mm. It's a good cocktail. <laughs> If you love this video and you're like, man, dude, I love the dashboard, I love all the tracking, but I don't know what numbers to track. I'm gonna answer that for you right now, okay? The video's right there. Check it out. There's the end. Hey, if you're not tracking your daily activity, my question for you is why, and I'm gonna spend the next several minutes showing you exactly why you should. I'm gonna sell you that you, uh, I'm the person that's not